Are we on? I'm on. I'll wait till you've nearly dropped your drink. <laughs> no, I'm worried about you dropping it. Today, we're going to be doing a bit of a different build. Normally on YouTube, you see PC builders building the best of the best with 2080 Ti's and everything that money can buy. Today, we're going to go for a more realistic scenario. The scenario we're going for is you've got a high spec build with Threadripper's 1900X, 750 power supply, the X399 Aorus motherboard and 16 gig of Corsair Vengeance with all the lighting and water cooling you can think of. Two Samsung 970 Evo NVMe M.2 SSDs at 250 gig each. But your graphics card has gone bang. And you no idea why. You can't get it working, you've had a route around and you found your old graphics card. In this case, we're going to be using the Radeon HD6870. One gig GDDR5 and a 1900X. Let's see what happens. Magically through Andy's editing, that's about four hours of building, which isn't too bad for a full custom loop, which we've flushed out, apart from the block, because if I took the block off, I'd have to redo the thermal pads, and I haven't got any thermal pads. But now I need to turn it on, and 20 years of building, this always makes me nervous, for reasons. Oh, that's a good sign. Okay. That's, it's on. Hopefully everything's happy. I'm surprised it's not multi-booted. It does that sometimes. Come on. Why are they not lighting up? What the fuck is that? <laughs> uh. The pump fell off. That would have been fucking disastrous. This is why it needs formatting. It just takes forever to boot. If we've done all this and that graphics card doesn't work, I will cry. But it's going through all the error codes, which is good. All the diagnostic codes. There's always a possibility I've put the RAM in the wrong slots. It's on. Have faith, it will work. Have, have some faith in it. We were going to run time spy as a benchmark, but it says your hardware may not be compatible because there's not enough VRAM. So, we're gonna run Fire Strike. Now, when I ran Fire Strike with the GTX 1080, we scored 16,724, which gave us graphics FPS of unknown because it doesn't tell me. I could have sworn this told me. 
Oh, well, by the by, the only thing that's changed since we ran that is the graphics card, which has gone from an 8 gig GTX 1080 to a 1 gig HD 6870 Radeon. So, yeah. I'm not holding out hope for a massive score, but let's do it. I'm actually quite intrigued about this. 15 FPS. Oh, oh, I hope we've got artifacts in as well. And I think it's just hung. Oh, no. I don't know if the camera was picking that up, but it was artifacting, which means the graphics card is trying too hard. But it's still quiet. I expected it to be... F oh, no. I don't, I don't know if you can hear that. But the fans have just kicked up. Fan has just kicked up. Ooh. I like my gaming to be as a PowerPoint presentation. It's 10.9 is what it is. <laughs> Physics test. This should be a bit more like it. Hey, 66. See, we can game with just physics games. Oh. Ah. Still getting artifact here. Ooh. That was pretty bad then. 5.6. More do you need? <laughs> That's cinematic 5.6, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it didn't even finish the test. It just like, gave up. Valid score. So. <laughs> Brains. <laughs> What's that achievement? With your CPU, you can do anything. That GPU is just holding you back. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> no kidding. 2,834. Dear God, we lost more than 10,000 points. We've seen how much it's bottlenecked drastically by getting 10 to 15 FPS on the graphics and 68 on the CPU with 3D Mark. But will Cinebench run a lower score with a lower graphics card? There's going to be people watching this going, yes or no. I don't know, so I'm going to run it. Now, we got originally a 1636 score with the GTX 1080. Oh, not overclock, that was at stock. This is all at stock. Go. Let's see what happens. From memory, that looks pretty similar. But this is my memory. And my memory sucks. It does feel slower. No. <laughs> 1632. So absolutely no difference. Which proves that Cinebench is literally just a CPU test. Some time wasted for you all there. Anyway, let's test some games. We've got Rocket League up, 1080, everything on high. At 60 FPS. What do we get if we take V-Sync off? 66. I can't actually get my head around how this is working so well. Just one grid graphics card is running Rocket League. I was expecting to laugh at the ridiculously low FPS we get even in this, but I mean, the, the fan has kicked up on that graphics card like good -o. It can't be that smooth in a match. Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It just got warm. Right, let's try it in a match because I refuse to believe that 96 FPS is attainable with a, what, this graphics card. It's one gig, it's GDDR, GDDR5, and we're 80, 78, 82. I'm genuinely staggered by that. I mean, don't expect this in Battlefield and Call of Duty and all that, but if you're an esports guy in Rocket League, Counter Strike, Rocket League's good. <laughs> Somehow. Borderlands enhanced. I know the menu runs at 30 FPS. He says with it running. Oh no, it did run at 30 until he patched it out. If you're wondering why we're not doing it with sound, it's because copyright on YouTube is a bit. We are seeing 45 FPS. With graphics on ultra high. The only thing I've turned off is depth of field because I hate it. 1080p Ultra, and that is, oh, it's dropping now. What, 40 FPS there? 43 FPS. All contact lost. That one can't, can't do as well. Primarily because it's still in development. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, this one struggles a bit more. But it is still in development. Very early access. 
and my graphics are still cranked, so we'll just lower them a bit. Now the fans woke up. 19, 20, 23. It's, yeah, it's playable. If you're just needing the graphics card just until... Whoa! It's playable, but I don't think the physics are liking it. Oh, there we go. Maybe it was just a random bug. Ha! <laughs> bug! Get it? Because they're bugs. 21 FPS for all contact lost. That's nuts. I'm going to have to, aren't I? I'm going to have to get Fortnite. Oh, version 8.3. Early access. <laughs> Settings, what has it gone for? High. 1080p high. V-Sync off, motion blur off. FPS on, apply. That does not look like high graphics settings. 25 FPS on high. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, 30 on the bus. I don't know how to Fortnite. We're getting 26 FPS, so for shits and giggles, let's whack it on Epic. Oh, 8, 10 FPS. Yeah, I thought that was going to be unrealistic. Medium, maybe. 720p resolution. There we go. 60 FPS at medium. No, 30 FPS. 120 if you look at the sky. 40 if you look everywhere else. So, playable. On low, you're getting 60 FPS. Which, if you're running a 60 Hz monitor, obviously, it's fine. But why would you run a 60 Hz monitor if you had Threadripper and a GTX 1080? It don't look great. It really doesn't look great. But I've just annoyed someone. <laughs> it's damn PC gaming left the game. So, in conclusion, win. Because it performs really well for Rocket League, Borderlands, Fortnite. It performs okay. And that's a one gig card. We've gone from a GTX 1080 to an HD 6870. So that's 7 gig of VRAM lost. And a good 8 years of technology progress rewound. So all in all, if you pop your graphics card and you've got an old one, try it. This one's 8 years old. It's a little bit worse than 750 Ti. But I'd say it's not the end of the world. But in conclusion, yeah, if you pop your graphics card and you've got an old one hanging around in the loft, stick it in. Who knows what sort of performance you'll get. That's properly surprised me. It really has. Good card. Good card. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you want to see in the comments. Share the video. Share the channel as always. Share the love. Bye-bye.